best decisions that we can make. And we live with those decisions, you know, so I thought it was an interesting topic that he picked, you know, because when you are distracted, you know, there are serious consequences to that distraction. A lot of people die because of distractions. You know, they they text and drive or they they're not paying attention to their surroundings. So concentration is is key um, even in just living, even in just survival. So I thought it was a very powerful topic that he picked. You know, and, and he does have a story to tell. You know, he has I, I'm, I'm pretty sure one point he may end up writing a book or or becoming a motivational speaker or something to that effect. I don't know, because he has done and, and experienced a lot in his 25 years, you know. But um, I think that. Going back to concentration concentration is where you build your mindset. You know, the Bible says as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It's a very interesting word. Why heart? Why not? As he thinks in his mind, I think it's because the mind and the heart are absolutely connected in terms of what you think in your core. That's who you are. And the core of you is your thought process, but it's also those emotions that are guiding you. And, um, when you, are focusing on the wrong thing. When you're concentrating on the wrong thing, you're letting the wrong thing guide you, you end up in the wrong situation. So as he was saying, getting rid of those distractions, and and I want to mention also reading, you know, I was a different kind of parent. I'm an educator and I did not let my kids watch a lot of TV. He can tell you, I did not let my kids... I did not let them watch a lot of TV or play a lot of video games. You know, like they might have gotten one or two hours a day, right? It was about one or two hours a day that they could watch video games and they could play. um, They could they could be on the 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 TV. I didn't even let them watch certain programs like they couldn't watch SpongeBob in my house. Yeah. Couldn't watch it. There was there were certain programs that were banned. I'm like, that's too stupid. You're not watching that. That's (laughs) too stupid. You know, but but I want to say this and I'm going to let you talk. I remember when my son did come back to the house and uh, I remember that um, I had sent him a bunch of books while he was gone. And his friends that he was staying with would watch him sit down and read a book. And they were like, you read? And he was like, yeah, I've read ever since I was a kid. My mama made me read. She made Mm -hmm. us read. We had to read. We couldn't live in a house and not read, (laughs) you know. Um, And the fact that there are literally books at 25 that he can point out that I did not make him read like Escape to Prosperity, which I have never read. I'm going to have to put that on my reading list now. He can point out to people, this book changed my life. This book changed my life. This book changed my life. You know, um, I sowed a seed in him that one way that you inform yourself is to read and that people used to say about black people, if you want to keep something from them, put it in a book. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I wanted nothing to be kept from my kids in terms of, I wanted them to have access to all the knowledge in the world. And I figured that all the knowledge in the world is in books. Now, some of it's in the world. We know experience in the world is powerful, but for him to be able to say that and for him to have people say to him, man, I've never seen anybody your age that reads like you do. You know, I mean, I felt like that was one of the things that I did do right as a parent. So I'm going to let you talk. Well, to actually add on to that, um, given a special take on it, because everyone knows, you know, what the parent may view as right. And everyone understands, you know, when the parent comes out with their opinion, but not always does the child get a chance to voice their opinion. In this case, they do. And this child is actually very grateful for his childhood. I know that there are a lot of things that I did not experience. SpongeBob, like one of them. And there were a lot of Things that other kids did that I did not do. Um, At the time, I could not completely understand it. I thought it was 
uh, something maybe I didn't deserve. I thought maybe it was something we couldn't have because maybe we just couldn't have it. We weren't able. I didn't know what the reasons were, um, and I didn't have the answers. But later on, as I grew up and I learned more, I started to realize without all of these life changes, there would have never been the developments in my life that I had. There would have never been the breakthroughs that I experienced, which I cannot lie, are so much more worth any of the trial and tribulation that I have experienced. The testimony that I have to this day itself alone is worth every trial and tribulation that I experienced. I know of every time that she talked about, I can remember it in my memory. And there was not a single ounce of regret. There was not a single ounce of, how can you say, tension. Because what I understood as she explained these points in my life is that two things. One, that those are points in the past that are no longer here. And two, that those points in the past are actually the reason why I am here today and able to say that 